Remy, 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 Remy. No, my cat just made a mess everywhere. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Oh, God, Lord. I don't know where I was at. It says the law and the prophets were pro. I can't say that word. <laughs> Hola, hello, welcome back to Talks with Tally. My name is Tally. Welcome if you've never been here before, and welcome back to those who have been here before. This is my segment on my channel time with Tally, where I speak about the Lord. I have faith talks with you all, and I share with you the word that the Lord has placed on my heart. Today, I am so excited. I always say this. I always say I'm so excited, but it's because I'm literally always excited because when it comes to the word of God, I get really hyped. So <laughs> we are going to get started today with this word. And truly, this word has been the essence and the fiber of my entire journey with the Lord since I have begun. Began? Begun. I don't know. English is not my first language. Don't judge me. Anyways, this is episode eight. Ooh. And this word is titled, He is Change. <gasps> As I'm sure you are aware, um, what we're probably going to talk about, if you don't like change, just click off. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Let's pray and we're going to get right into it. All right. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to speak about your word today. Lord, I want to say thank you, Lord, for the word that you've placed on my heart, Lord, for the people across the screen in this moment, Lord. I ask that it is a blessing to their life, Lord. I ask, Lord God, that in this moment, Father God, you place a filter in front of my mouth, Lord, that it be you speaking only, Lord, none of me, all of you, none of me, all of you, Father God. And I ask in this moment, Lord, that it be you revealing yourself, Lord, in this moment to those across the screen right now, Father God, let it be you having encounter with them that's special lord to them in their situation lord reveal to them what they need to hear in this moment lord draw them closer to you lord so that they see that you are the one true everlasting loving lord that we have amen amen in case you guys do not know i am a nurse right so when i went to nursing school we have this uh thing with acronyms right or what is it abbreviations or like shortcuts and notes because I'm sure I'm sure some of you guys are well aware or if not if you were not aware we take lots of notes in nursing school <laughs> a lot of notes we should get paid for how many notes we take <laughs> so in nursing school I remember a few years back I saw that my teacher had actually placed in the notes a little triangle and it was talking about a patient's status changing. And so I was like, Ooh, I like that triangle. So I asked her, what does it mean? What does a triangle mean? And she says it means change. And so I have since then adopted that symbol into my notes. Anytime I write anything, honestly, I know that the triangle signifies change. It is the Greek symbol for change. And it wasn't until I actually came to Christ and I actually started writing Writing this word that I realized that's the one I use and I thought triangle cool like the Trinity right like Father Son and Holy Spirit I was like oh look at that but then the Lord actually took me deeper glory to you father the triangle in the Greek alphabet is actually the Delta the Delta is the fourth letter in the Greek alphabet and the only reason I really knew that was because I was in a sorority in college. Don't talk to me about sororities because I know now I was not in a relationship with the Lord when I was in college. Okay, I long gone left that a long time ago. But anyways, the Delta actually, the triangle has a value of four. They actually saw this triangle, this Delta to signify door. It was known to be a doorway. Oh Lord. It symbolizes a Phoenician letter. Um, and it's similar to the Hebrew Dalet. I don't know how to say that. Well, Dalet, D-A-L-E-T. And in Hebrew, that word does mean door or gate. In my research, I found it says, um, it indicates resistance and state of selflessness and humility needed to pass through it. Ooh. So let's get into the word, but I just want to start there because what this word is here to do is to remind you that where he is, there has to be change. You will not be stuck the same way that you are. You cannot be where he is. Nothing remains the same. Nothing remains in the old ways. He makes everything new. John 10, nine to 16. It says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. Ooh, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Oh, pasture as it is read in the, this is coming straight from the Lord because I genuinely, I have, I don't have that written anywhere. I don't think I have it written anywhere. Pasture is known as, you know, a field of grass. It is known as rest. 
Ooh, and we're gonna get into that too, actually. I think I do have that here. But it, also it is, is it's grass is known as nourishment for animals. Oh! <laughs> it is known as nourishment. It is known as what is to be consumed. Oh Lord, where was I even reading? I got sidetracked. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Shut up, so cute. Oh, he's so amazing. Oh Lord, 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 you're so good, you're so good. I'm just, I'm just sitting in this word right now because I feel like, Lord, bring me deeper, Lord. I know you're here. The man runs away because he is the hired hand. The Lord shall never leave you nor forsake you. Lord. You know what I actually just realized? I'm gonna just, gonna take it back like when someone is hired for a job right they're getting paid to do a job it doesn't necessarily mean that they actually have an emotional attachment to this thing that they're doing they're getting paid to do it so therefore it is their duty to do it but not everybody sticks to what it is that is in their job description not everybody actually follows the rules of what it is meant to be that you are supposed to do so therefore those that are getting paid to do these things they don't really care they don't have that love for you they are detached from you they don't have that responsibility that they feel within themselves for you but he because he loves you he's not getting paid for this actually because he loves you he sacrifices his own life on the cross for us i have other sheep that are not in this sheep pen i must bring them also oh it reminds me of the verse where he says he leaves the 99 to get the one when there is one of his sheep that are have gone astray he goes to get them because he doesn't leave any of them behind there's no favoritism with God. He loves every single one of us equally. Even though John probably doesn't think that. John the beloved. <laughs> Matthew 7, 13 to 14, it says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only few find it. I gotta be honest with you guys, this time coming to Christ and truly accepting Jesus into my heart and into my life, repenting for my sins, it has been so different this time versus all the other times that I did it because I know as a kid, I probably went up to altar call probably, I don't even know how many times. <laughs> I remember like every Sunday, like going up and saying, Jesus, I want to give you my life. I repent for my sins <laughs> as a kid. Like I, I definitely did it multiple times for sure. For real, as an adult, this time around actually making this conscious decision, being able to and having the mind to make this decision to follow God. It has been so, so different from the rest. This time I wasn't making a commitment to church to religion this time there was gratitude this time it was a commitment to him i gotta be really honest too the thing is gratitude hits so different when you've actually been through something when you've actually been saved and rescued from something yeah i went through some pretty terrible stuff when i was younger but i wasn't thankful of the fact that the lord actually had me come out of it the fact that the lord had saved my life from death i don't even know how many times in the last 15 years since i've separated from him and probably even before that too of course. Instead of being grateful, for many years I was just angry at God, which is truly the reason I probably never really got to know him, which honestly only added to me not getting to know him. John 6, 42, it says, they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? These are people questioning Jesus once he finally came out as the Messiah. This message is here to remind you that people won't know you anymore. They thought they knew you, but the thing is that a lot of the times people actually tend to know us based on what we put our identity in. And a lot of the times it's our sin. A lot of the times it's how we present ourselves in front of others. A lot of the times it's not really who we are at the core. And there are also many times where we seek our identity in other things, external things that actually have nothing to do with who we are. It has nothing to do with what God has placed in us. So the Lord has planted us with love for others, righteousness, truth, and patience. Yet people they want to get their value and I've done it so that's why I'm saying it they want to get their value from the attention that they get the followers that they have their body what their bodies can do and what they can look like their sexual orientation their money when none of that matters when in reality 
if you're remembered by anything, it's going to be how you treated people and what God has actually placed in your heart and what you've done with it. Because when you have him in you, it has to come out and show in some way, shape or form. Mark 2, 21 to 22, it says, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Therefore, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins. The old you can't mesh with what he's doing in you now. The old you and the new you cannot cohabitate in the same place. The old you is gone and the new you must enter. And you know what's so interesting to me because it's actually happened to me too. People will say, I feel like I don't even know you now. You look so different now. There's something different about you. You're glowing different. There's something. You're like a whole new woman. Good. <laughs> Truly at the core, I've always believed the Lord has placed a love in my heart for people that was very special and not many people maybe have had that, which not that I'm better than anybody else, but I do love people a lot. And I will say, I felt like that thing, that gift the Lord has placed in my heart, the love for people that he has given me has always been, mm, there's always been like this effort and this force trying to come against that and try to outshine it and or distract or cover it up or distract from it. Instead of that coming out and like full fledged, just shining all the time. The vision was somewhat blurred when it came to how I presented it though, how I spoke, how I took certain pictures, how I presented myself. I used to wear my heart on my sleeve, but in reality, all the love I was giving other people, I was just looking for it to be given to me in return because I had never had it. I always used to love people way more than they loved me and gave them way more in hopes that they would see the value in me so that they could also love me the way I love them. I never realized to a certain degree it was somewhat transactional, even though I never really got what I paid for. But it's so true. How can you give others what you don't truly have? what you're not really trained in. My love for others was mixed in with unforgiveness, with pride, with anger, with jealousy, with envy. It was contaminated. So in reality, the things that I was trained in, the things I was special skills in was contaminated. So all I could give was what I had and it was destruction inside of me. The enemy can only lead you to where he is going and it is a path of destruction to destruction. And so therefore, when I thought I was just wearing my heart on my sleeve and I deserve to be loved and all this other stuff, what in reality people were actually seeing was my insecurity, was my lack of love, my abandonment, my, my wanting to be accepted, my want to be more than what I felt I was in that moment. Because I always felt like even though I have all this love and everything, I'm not good enough to be in this world. I didn't blend into it, but now everything is so different. <laughs> Luke 16, 16 to 17, the law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached and everyone is forcing their way into it. It is easier for heaven and earth to disappear than for the least stroke of a pen to drop out of the law. He came to fulfill the law, not to abolish it because he is the law and his word is the law. He fulfills all these prophecies. So therefore, actually, if you wanted to, his word is over the written law. If the Lord were to choose to take Moses' law that he had previously written and say, you know what? I changed my mind about this, which he doesn't because he's the same God today, forever and always and yesterday and whenever. But if the Lord says, I want to add on to what I said here. I actually want to take this away because I don't care for that anymore. Doesn't mean it wasn't true in that time. It just means he's doing different this time. Same man, different tactic. And the Lord has the right to do that. So if the Lord now says, I'm going to do this instead, this is okay. And said, that's for him to choose. He can do that. His word is over the law. I don't understand how law works to be honest, but I just know at least in my house, if I make the rules in my house, I have the right to change them if I want to, whenever I want to. Right? That's all I'm saying. The thing is, he literally said, I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to put myself on this earth and I'm going to show people how to actually fulfill the law because clearly they must have not been able to read and or what they were doing was taking the word and making it what they wanted it to be. So the Lord said, y'all are clearly tactile and visual learners. <laughs> so I'm going to send you an example that's going to show you exactly how to fulfill this law that I'm talking to you about because you guys didn't get it the first time. And then on top of that, everything was made new in the new covenant. Once Jesus came onto this earth and the Lord saw how everything was lived down here and everything that we did go through, 
me and my friend Lily were talking about it the other day. We were talking and saying, you know, it's not that God changed who he is. It's not that he is not the same God, but God now has added a different tactic. And that's when Jesus came in. That's when the new covenant began, the new promise. Maybe this way they will get it. The tablet commandments, they still remain true, but in Jeremiah, it says that he does have a new covenant. In Jeremiah 17, one, he speaks of the new covenant that's coming. It says, Judah's sin is engraved with an iron tool inscribed with a flint point on the tablets of their hearts and on the horns of their altars. Jeremiah 31, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Lo, know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. He used to remember people's sins. So therefore, they will have his law written in their hearts and not on tablets of stone. Stone. There are people that have had hardened hearts, cold-hearted hearts, stone-like hearts. But now, let's be honest, almost everyone knows about Jesus and what he did. But it's not until all nations know of him that Jesus has not come back on that cloud is when that time comes and nobody knows the day nor the hour. This word also goes into the fact that everything he does, he makes new, he changes, right? Let's talk more about it. In his word, he also changes names. And many of you probably already know what I'm gonna mention, but let's just get into it anyway. When names are changed in the Bible, it is a change of destiny. For example, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna read through these so I don't like trip up here. When he calls the old Simon, he is talking to the old Simon, not the Peter that he has created because he changed Simon's name to Peter. So when he calls your old name, he's talking to the old you. Keep it along here. Your old behavior and who you used to be before him. When you come to him, he gives you a new name in heaven. Simon means instability, flesh, um, weakness. There's also another Hebrew meaning that says he has heard. Also, I saw in my research that it actually also signifies flat nosed. And the only other area I could find flat nosed was in Leviticus, it says Leviticus 21, 18 to 21, it says for whatsoever man he be that hath, oh, this is KJV. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man or a lame for he that hath a flat nose or anything superfluous or a man that is broken footed or broken handed or crook backed called your crooked back <laughs> or a dwarf or that hath a blemish in his eye or be scurvy or scabbed or hath his stones broken. No man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron, the priest shall come nigh to offer offerings of the Lord made by the fire. He hath a blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God. His word says that when he comes to get his church, his church will be without a blemish. He, his church will not have a stain on their dresses, on their clothing, whatever you want to call it. He's looking for a sinless church, a stainless church, a blemishless church. We are the church. We are the body. All of us. Simon's name was changed to Peter. So he went from instability, being flat nose. He went from being weak to Peter, which means stability, spirit, strength, the rock in Greek. And Jesus even said, and this is the rock I will build my church upon. Matthew 16, 18, it says, and I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Hadassah, mm, Hadassah, the story of Esther. Hadassah means myrtle tree, which is usually known for peace love and prosperity. In Hebrew, it means a hiddenness. Ooh, but Esther is a Persian name and you know what it means? Star. Oh my gosh, Lord. He takes what was hidden and puts it into the light. Makes a star out of it. Wow. Makes her a queen. What? Esther was called to be a light and shine amongst her people, to stick out and to go forward and to speak for them. Abram, who many know as Abraham, his name primarily was Abram, A-B-R-A-M. His name meant exalted father. And if you know the story, he always wanted to be a father. But then the Lord then said, I'm going to change your name. And now you'll be known as Abraham, 
But what does Abraham mean? It means father of a multitude. And he said that your descendants will be like the grains of sand. Could you imagine all the grains of sand in the seas, in the beaches? That is the multitude of Abraham. Lord, Lord, Lord. Therefore, the Lord's promise was in the changing of his name. The thing is, he was always meant to be a dad, but he just, maybe he just didn't realize it. So what he doubted in the little, the Lord multiplied greatly. Same thing with his wife, because remember, when you're married, you were one. So the blessing that one receives, it's also a blessing for the other. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Not in my notes. Sarai was the name of Abraham's wife, and he changed her name to Sarah. Sarai, for them, with that E sounding ending, it signifies possession. She was confined to one family only. She was Abraham's personal lady or princess. She was confined to that role. But Sarah means princess, simply and without any restrictions, without limitations to dominion. She's not just a princess to one now, but of many. <laughs> Saul, the, bi the big man Saul. Saul of Tarsus that persecuted the Christians. He was changed to Paul, little man Paul, because after he met the Lord, he met the real big man in town and he became one of service. The Lord changed Jacob's name to Israel in Genesis. Genesis 32, 22 to 32, it says, that night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the fort of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip and so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man Man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. And then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, it is because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared. Ooh. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of a hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Jacob means to follow, to be behind. Israel means let God prevail. <laughs> A name is a prayer, it's a blessing, a change in destiny. It is an answer. It is a new beginning, a new hope. Changing of names, and this is where I'm done, but changing of names were necessary because you would not, they would not, but I'm also speaking to you now. You cannot do the things that the Lord has commanded you and called you to do and be the person that the Lord has called you to be, being the same person you used to be. Stuck in your old ways, stuck in the past. Look what happened to Lot's wife. She stayed stuck in her past. She couldn't give it up she couldn't let it go and the lord turned her into a pillar of salt what he originally called her to be he says that we are the salt of the earth lord i could get into it but i'm not going to the thing is he needs to change your name in order for you to become who he has called you to be he needs to change your destiny he needs to change who you are what you're doing right now changing your destiny and the path in which you're going on right now in order to be the person and do the things that he has called you to do the world couldn't stay the same way that it was when it was noah's time there's a reason that the lord had to wipe everything out he couldn't allow this to continue to grow in the way that it was so he needed to start over and make everything new and so yeah that does take pain sorry to tell you it does take pain Trans Transformation and change is never really easy or comfortable because a lot of the times we were very comfortable where we were already at, but he didn't call us to be stagnant. He called us for glory upon glory. <laughs> You can't be away from the Lord and do his will. You can't be in your old ways and receive new blessings. You can't receive bigger and better holding on to lesser and smaller. So say rest in peace to the old you and welcome in the new. It's a sacrifice that's worth making because remember the old does not mix with the new. It'll ruin it. It'll contaminate it. So this word is just a reminder that if you've really decided to take this choice, make this choice to follow him, you cannot stay the same. If there hasn't been a change, there is a problem. Surrender to him and let him mold you as the potter does. We can't do it on our own and we are definitely not called to. Lord, let's pray. Cause I don't even know what just happened. I feel like I don't remember half of the word that was said. <laughs> 
Father God, I want to come before you in this moment, Lord, and say thank you so much for the word that you have given us today, Lord. I want to say thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes, Lord, opening our hearts in this moment, Father God. I ask for anybody across that screen right now or, or under my voice in this moment, Lord, I ask, Father God, that it be you, Lord, touching them, Lord God, softening their hearts for you, Lord God, opening their hearts, their minds towards you, Father God, changing their gaze to be towards you, Lord. Let it be you right now, Lord, changing their heart posture, changing right now, Lord God, everything that is gone against them, Lord, in this moment, Lord, change it for their good, Father God. I ask you in this moment, Lord, that as well, you change their perspective of who you are, Father. Change their old ways and make them new, Father God. Show them that there is is a light at the end of the tunnel, Lord, and it's only through you, Lord. God, I ask you for every single one of them right now, Lord. I ask that it be you, Lord, transforming, Lord, giving them an encounter with you, Father God, because where you are, Lord, there has to be change. Let it be you, Father God, because only your hand can perform these kind of miracles, Lord. Let it be you, Father God. Guide them, Lord, so that they can change to be only through your power, through your strength, Father God, so they can become the people that you want them to be, to step into the purpose and the calling that you have called them for, Lord. For your glory, Lord, this word has been spoken, Father God. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you for this blessing, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for spending time with me. I loved that word, and it was definitely one I had to receive myself. He's changing me every day, and Truly, when you get to feel God's presence every single day, when you get to see the miracles that he has done in your life every single day, even in the little stuff, when you get to realize that the Lord has made his presence known upon your life, things have to change. And they're little miracles that you get to witness along the way. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be a witness to these miracles that you're performing in everyday life. Every day you're performing a miracle in me and even in the hearts of those around me. So thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be a witness of it. Where he is, there has to be change. Where there is unhealthiness, he is health. Where there is brokenness, there is a fixer. Where there is pain, there is joy. Where he is, there has to be a change. And if things are not changing for you, examine yourself and your circumstances in your environment. He wants to change you. You just gotta let him. Thank you all for spending time with me and I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Bye.